Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about backports, uh, packages which are new in Python and then provided as a, a PyPI package for older versions of Python. Uh, some examples of this are zone info, which was added in Python 3.9, which is available as backport zone info on PyPI, or importlib.metadata, which is new in 3.8 and is provided as importlib-metadata on PyPI. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use these and how to specify the package metadata such that your library can work on all the different versions of Python and only conditionally install the package when needed. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so to get started today, we're going to make a very silly Python file and we're going to turn it into a package. Uh, so I'm going to show you the full packaging, the steps, uh, but we're going to start by just making a file. We're going to be using zone info today. Uh, zone info is a you know, new in 3.9 library that provides time zone information. Um, there are other ways to do time zone information, but this is just one example. Uh, but since it's new in 3.9, we'll want to use the backport package on older versions of Python. Uh, but I'm going to, for now, pretend that we're only supporting Python 3.9, and then I'll show you how to adapt the code afterwards. And we're going to make a silly program that just prints the time zone name, because <laughs> I, I couldn't think of anything better than that. Uh... Oh, and we get a different theme today because I forgot to delete the theme file. So, uh, guess you'll just deal with that then. Word arg parse and zone info and argument parser. Uh, and I'm just gonna have it take in the date. Sure. Uh, <laughs> And we're going to parse that date. Uh, this percent y percent and percent d. I'm just gonna have it take date. Uh, oh, I have it backwards. I always get it backwards. <laughs> percent y. Oh, you can't see this because it's off screen. Uh, I'm just trying out. I tried out this. Oops tried out this and it didn't work, um, so I'm just doing this in the other direction. Yeah, so this is how we would parse the date time, cool, let's do this. Uh, and we need to switch the order of this, oh wait no, that is the right order, args.date, and then we need to do dt equals dt.replace, uh, and I'm just going to use the example from the docs, which is America. Wait, maybe we can use America Detroit. <laughs> That'll be my time zone, right? 3.9, right? Of course, it is new. Uh, why did I not copy? Oh, because I did Control Shift C. Of course. On info dot this, de toi. Uh, okay, so we're going to try and see what time zone it is in Detroit. <laughs> this is, of course, not a very useful Python package, but um, but I just wanted to demo something. Uh, date time. And there we go. All right, so if we do Python 3.9 MTZ name. And then give it a date. On January 1st, we're in Eastern Standard Time. And in June, we're in Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, cool. We've made our, our little thing. Uh, I'm going to make a small setup.py such that we can install this. Setup.py uh, from setup tools, import setup, setup name equals easy name. Version one, pi modules equals teasy name, and entry points equals. Console scripts, easy name equals easy name main. And I think that's all I really need. So now if we make a Python 3.9 virtual environment <laughs> and we pip install dot, we should be able to call teasy name. Okay, cool. So we have a little working Python package, uh, and now I can show you how you would manage backports. So we were we were very careful here to 
uh, use Python 3.9 to test this because zone info is new in Python 3.9. Uh, so now I'm going to show you the approach to making it work in older versions. And in this case, we want to conditionally import zone info based on what version we're using. Now, many people do this where they'll do try and then accept import error and then from backports import zone info because this is how it's going to be provided. A lot of people use try accept here. I actually don't like this for two reasons. One of them is sometimes, sometimes you'll end up with uh, your package state in a weird state and this won't necessarily raise an import error or this will be unavailable or it'll be available but the wrong thing on an older version of Python. And I find it to be much more explicit to specify the version ranges here. So if sys.version info is greater than or equal to 3.9, then we'll do this. Um, that way we're very explicit about what versions we support. This also has the added benefit that if you're using, you know, for instance, one of my tools, PyUpgrade, uh, and you end up, um, you know, you end up uh, saying that you only support 3.9 and above, PyUpgrade will automatically remove this old block for you. So you won't have to worry about it. Um, so I, I like to be very explicit here on this. Um, and that's basically the usage part of this. So now if we uh, were to make a 3.8 virtual environment, we have 3.8 dash p Python 3.8. And we'll actually recreate this virtual environment a bit just to show you the installation because the installation is broken right now. If we do pip install dot here and we do tz name, oops, pip install dot. We do tz name. Uh, like this, you'll see, oh, it's import sys. Seems kind of important. Install, I should just do editable. That way we don't have to keep reinstalling. <laughs> um, you'll see we get this module not found backports. If I pip install backports uh, dot zone info, this of course is not working because we have, it should just work without me having to do this. Uh, but if we install this now, you'll see that we get uh, this working thing. This is how you'll use it in code. Uh, but we also have to manage it in our dependencies. So let's actually delete this virtual environment so that we can start off from scratch in a second. Oop, eight. And we're going to add the metadata that allows us to conditionally install this backport, but only on uh, old Python versions. And so we are going to add install requires here. Uh, this is how we say what, what dependencies we need at runtime. Of course, you might be using setup.cfg, and so that'll look a little bit different. Uh, you'll have your install requires here. And spoilers, this is the syntax we're going to be using here. We're going to say backports.zoneInfo uh, semicolon to use a version specifier, or, or an environment marker, I think is the actual word, but we're going to be using it to do a, a version specifier. Uh, Python version less than 3.9. And the quoting is a little bit weird here, uh, but it's important to do it like this because uh, that's just the way it parses. It ends up not actually doing a string comparison here because that would be broken for 310, for instance. <laughs> so it, it actually parses this. And that was actually a contribution that I made because, uh, yeah, I recognized that 310 was going to be a problem years before people were like, oh, wait, strings, strings. Uh, but anyway, this is how you can say conditionally that you'll depend on backport zone info, but only if this environment marker is matched. And there are many other environment markers, like you can use ones for different platforms. Uh, like here's an example for one uh, that only installs something on Windows, uh, which is a <laughs> sort of backport for curses um, due to fiddly things. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, that's, that's an example of this. Uh, so now that we have this metadata, we should be able to make a virtual env using Python 3.8 and install our package directly and activate pip install dot and it should just work. Uh, ba, 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 what am I doing? Oh, tz, tz name. Cool. So we didn't have to do anything special. It automatically installed uh, this backport zone info for us. We didn't have to do anything special there. And just to show you that you don't have to do anything special in 3.9 either, it will, it will avoid that dependency. 3.9 bin activate, pip install dot. So you'll notice here that it does not install any dependencies. It just installs itself. 
and um, you can see that it still works. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of how you manage backports. Let me show you the two parts of that. The first part is your conditional import to grab your backport. Uh, now, sometimes you'll have to use as here, like the, the one for import the metadata would look something like this. Oops, sorry. If sys.version info is greater than or equal to 3.8, import, import lib.metadata as import lib metadata. Otherwise, this might be an example of how you do this. Oops, this should say 3.8. I think I said that out loud, but then typed it in. Uh, so that's one part is the conditional import. And then the other part is the conditional dependency. And that's how you manage backports. Pretty easy. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.